Howdy, Immortalim here, and today I'm going to be doing another manga recommendations video, uh, this time on the topic of shoujo manga. So without any further ado, let's take a look at some of my favorite shoujo manga and why you should read them. So starting us off is a manga from the incredible Year 24 group, who if you're unfamiliar with are a group of women who revolutionized what shoujo manga could be in terms of storytelling, in terms of artwork, etc, etc. And one of the more famous titles from their catalog is The Heart of Thomas. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with the plot of Heart of Thomas, the story is set in a secondary school in Germany where a boy called Thomas uh, commits suicide and after he commits suicide it turns out that a classmate of him uh, referred to as Julie uh, receives a letter from him a posthumous suicide note in which Thomas uh, professes his love so understandably he is a bit disturbed by this sometime later uh, a boy called Eric uh, arrives at the school and Eric is the spitting image of Thomas the boy who killed himself and so as you can imagine that further unnerves Julie and the story progresses from there. Now the first thing I have to say about the story is that it's a surprisingly in-depth emotional story with a lot of twists and turns and in general a lot of the characters are very likeable. Um, I do have to confess that Julie himself is a bit cold for my liking uh, so he's probably my least favorite character in this book uh, but regardless the rest of the cast are great and of course the artwork in this book is absolutely stunning. Uh, this book was done by Moto Hagio and and this is where you can truly see her talent as an artist. Uh, the amount of detail and stylization with all of the characters and backgrounds and everything are absolutely beautiful. But I also have to point out the impeccable panel work in which panels are presented in various shapes and sizes and she quite often uh, removes the panel borders and just lets the images flow into one another which is an absolutely incredibly beautiful look. So as far as shoujo manga goes um, I definitely have no hesitation to recommend Heart of Thomas. I think it is an excellent read and a fine showcase for why you should be interested in the year 24 group. After that we have a manga that I've actually mentioned before and is definitely one of my favorite shoujo manga and that is A Devil and Her Love Song. Now A Devil and Her Love Song is set in the modern day and follows a character called Maria Kawai. And Maria Kawai has been expelled uh, from her previous school uh, because she attacked a teacher. She assaulted them and she has a very blunt attitude uh, that is very off-putting uh, to a lot of people. Uh, but regardless, at this new school, uh, she begins to make some friends, particularly with these two boys. And as the series progresses, uh, we come to understand more about Maria. Uh, we understand why she is like this. Uh, she's able to work through uh, some of her issues as well as help other characters. And I think it is a really, really brilliant read. Um, it's incredibly underrated. I hardly ever hear other people talking about this series. And it's definitely one of the best that I've ever read. Uh, so that is so surprising to me. And the artwork itself is really, really good as well. I love the way that the eyes are done in this manga. I think it looks really, really beautiful. And I strongly recommend uh, that you check out this manga, uh, give it a shot, and I think you will find yourself very, very pleasantly surprised by how good it is. After that we have an Osamu Tezuka manga, and that is Yuniko. Now if you're unfamiliar with Yuniko, uh, Yuniko follows a unicorn called Yuniko. Uh, Yuniko lives with a girl called Psyche, and the goddess Venus uh, is jealous of Psyche. Believes that Psyche outshines her beauty, and that the reason that she is so beautiful is because how happy she is with Yuniko. So she convinces uh, Sephiroth um, to take Yuniko away uh, from Psyche, to send him uh, through various different time periods um, across history, and to remove his memory every time that he uh, enters a new time period so that he doesn't remember Psyche or anyone that he's become friends with. And it is a very, very enjoyable read. I will say that some of the stories are better than others. It is presented, for the most part, episodically. There's very few recurring elements. And there are certainly some stories that I like more than the others. Um, but one of the main things, this aspect will really stand out to people when they read this book, uh, is the fact that it is presented in full colour and it is absolutely 
gorgeous looking. It's certainly one of the most beautiful looking manga that I've ever read. And even with a, a little bit of the unevenness of these stories, I still think that they have a lot of charm to them. The other thing that I think is worth noting um, is that, as you can see, this is read from left to right, uh, just like the Western style. But interestingly, this manga is not flopped. This manga was actually originally released in this format. Uh, because it was released by Sanrio, who I believe are the people who do Hello Kitty, and it was their intention that Unico would be released in the West. I don't believe they did that around the time of its release for whatever reason. So I just think it's important to note that if you're off-put uh, by the idea of manga being flopped, this manga isn't flopped, it's actually presented in its original format. Uh, so definitely check this manga out if you're an Osama Tezuka fan, if you're a fan of shoujo manga, or if you just like cute stories. After that we have another very interesting manga in the form of Hot Gimmick. So in terms of the story, um, and keep in mind this is going to be a little bit tough here, so basically the story follows a character called Hatsumi, and Hatsumi's sister Akane, uh, who is younger than her, mind you, uh, is a little bit promiscuous and one day is concerned that she might in fact be pregnant and she gets Hatsumi to go and get a pregnancy test uh, for her to be able to check it out. And on her way back uh, she encounters a neighbor boy and this neighbor boy notes the fact that she has the pregnancy test and he decides as he's going to blackmail her uh, in return for not mentioning the pregnancy test uh, which could potentially cause a scandal where they live. He tells her that she is going to be his slave. And that can be quite a tough premise, um, but the manga, while it can be quite tough at certain points, isn't as tough as you think it will actually be. The characters actually end up becoming really interesting, that you really want to see what happens to them. There are some amazing events that happen in the story. And of course, I want to also say that I really, really do like the artwork here. I think there's a lot of style uh, to the visual style of this book. And of course, I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention um, how Viz Media presented this. So this edition I have here is called a Viz Big, uh, which I believe is, they don't typically do now. I do believe they keep releasing Viz Bigs for series that they have released in Viz Bigs before, but I don't believe they're doing any new Viz Bigs. If I'm wrong about that, uh, correct me in the comments below. Viz Media's presentation here is beautiful. Um, there's higher quality paper, you get three volumes per book. It's a really, really good presentation of this manga. And I think it's definitely worth checking out, uh, particularly if you're into shoujo manga. Following that, we have a manga that is quite popular, and I was considering leaving this manga out simply due to how popular it was. But considering it is one of my favorite shoujo manga, I thought I may as well include it, even though it is very popular. That, of course, is Cardcaptor Sakura. Now, Cardcaptor Sakura follows a girl called Sakura, of course. And one day when she goes into the basement, um, she finds a book. And once she opens the book, all of these cards uh, go flying out. And this little creature called Cerberus explains to her that she's just released all of these cloud cards and that they're going to cause mayhem but only people who are magical are able to open the book and so that means she is actually capable of using magic and so it becomes her duty uh, to find these cloud cards uh, to put them to rest and to stop any havoc that they're causing. Now, I want to say that that does sound like a very typical uh, kind of adventure series um, but there are some absolutely amazing chapters in this book and the amount of emotion packed into this series is something that I think will catch a lot of people off by surprise. It's a really moving work and the cast of characters themselves are incredibly likable. And of course the artwork by Clamp is absolutely gorgeous as well. Um, quite often I compare a lot of their techniques to the Year 24 group. And even if there is a bit of a different style to them, I think the character designs of them are stunning. I think the level of detail on offer is fantastic. And of course, there's some amazing panel work from Clamp as well. So I think Character After Sakura is definitely a series that you should consider uh, picking up. It's released by Dark Horse in these beautiful editions. And finally, I decided to end these recommendations with a manga that was very foundational, that ended up being incredibly influential in the field of shoujo manga, going on to inspire many later mangaka. And that, of course, is Princess Knight. Now, Princess Knight starts off in heaven, uh, where God and his angels uh, are providing hearts to these newborns. Basically, he gives uh, the boys boy hearts and he gives the girls 
girl hearts. But one of these angels, Tink, actually makes a mistake and gives a girl a boy heart. Uh, so now this girl has both a boy heart and a girl heart. And as you can imagine, God is very displeased with Tink and sends Tink down in order to fix his mistakes. Meanwhile, it turns out that this girl is actually a princess. She's been born to the royal family of Silverland. When this birth is announced, uh, the announcer has a lisp, um, which makes people think that a prince has been born and not a princess. And so from that point onwards, uh, Princess Sapphire, who is our main character, has to pretend uh, to be a prince in public. And to be fair, it is a very, very interesting read. Um, I think the artwork here is really, really lovely. Definitely one of the better looking Osama Tezuka works when it comes to his earlier works. I guess it is worth noting from that perspective that despite the fact that the original Princess Knight was released in the 1950s, uh, what we got over here is actually a remake that was done in the 1960s. But regardless, the artwork is really, really lovely. And with regards to the story itself, there are a lot of great uh, twists and turns and enjoyable characters in it. Admittedly, I'm not particularly fond of the character of Tink. I find him quite annoying. And the end to Princess Knight is actually quite sudden and to me a bit jarring um, so I do wish that Osam Tezuka had taken his time to kind of expand on that ending um, but regardless if you're into Osam Tezuka if you're into shoujo manga and you want to see one of the earlier works that ended up becoming very influential uh, then Princess Knight is an easy recommendation so those were my uh, shoujo manga recommendations and of course as ever I'd love to hear your guys thoughts uh, have you read any of these manga and if you have, did you like them? Did you dislike them? What are some other shoujo manga that you would recommend? And of course, if you have any other information about shoujo manga, about any of these authors, etc, etc, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you want to support the channel, I would encourage you to use my Amazon and Write Stuff affiliate links in the description below. When you purchase an anime manga through those affiliate links, not only are you supporting me, not only are you supporting the channel, but you're also supporting the anime and manga industry. So I would highly encourage you to use those affiliate links to purchase your anime manga. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.